Kevin Elizabeth, a wedding photographer based in San Diego, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how you can be a great maid of honor. In today's video, I'm going to be mostly sharing how you can be a great maid of honor, but this video can also apply to how to be a great best man. You just need to basically flip it around. So the first thing that you need to be making sure that you're doing is an overall thing. So essentially as a maid of honor, you are going to be responsible for being the head of the bridesmaids. So basically making sure that you are responsible for coordinating any bridesmaid related activities or responsibilities. And one thing that I would highly recommend is that you create some sort of text group chain or email chain where all of the bridesmaids and the bride and yourself are all in one place. So put together some sort of text group or email chain where everybody can communicate all in one place. The next thing I would recommend is that you offer to host either the bridal shower or the bachelorette party. If you are hosting the bridal shower, you can co-host with the bride's mother or her aunt or maybe even another bridesmaid. Um, usually the bridal shower is not always done by the maid of honor. Oftentimes it is done by like a mom or an aunt or someone like that. Um, but I would say more than likely you are going to be doing the bachelorette party. And when you are hosting the bachelorette party, I would highly recommend that you make sure that whatever you are hosting the type of party that it is going to be suitable for every bridesmaid's budget you don't want to be planning some getaway to palm springs if everybody lives on the east coast and not all of the bridesmaids can afford to do that so i would highly recommend that you feel out what every bridesmaid is comfortable spending that way you don't leave out anybody and nobody's feelings are hurt or somebody feels like they have to do it, but they really can't afford it and they're not comfortable with it. And they go anyway, but they don't really feel like they can eat or they can't spend any money while they're there. So you don't wanna have a situation like that. Make sure everybody feels like they can be included and they can all afford it comfortably. So for the bachelorette party, you can make it like it's a weekend getaway or it can just be one single night out. It doesn't have to be extravagant. Just make sure that it's something that everybody can do and that it's something that the bride herself is really going to enjoy. If the bride isn't somebody who's going to enjoy a weekend in Vegas, don't make it a weekend in Vegas. The bride herself might enjoy something far more simple like just a day at a spa or something like that not that that's actually really even simple but you know what I mean it doesn't have to be some stereotypical bachelorette party getaway it can be something much more at home type situation the next thing that I would recommend is that you go wedding dress shopping with the bride. Now, if you don't live near the bride, this might be much harder to do, especially if you can't fly out to join her. You can always uh, join by FaceTiming her while she is going shopping. And if you can go shopping with her, I definitely suggest that you are very supportive during this process. Always make sure that the bride shares her opinion first about the dress before you blurt yours out. Because if she loves the dress, you don't wanna say, oh, I hate it, or I don't like it before she shares her opinion because you don't want to crush her spirits about the dress. I see this happen all the time at my bridal boutique and it is definitely really sad for the bride when she loves the dress and she tells me that behind the curtain and then we open the curtain and the group is like, Ugh, no, hate it, don't like it. And then she's like, oh, but I really liked it. And so you definitely want to make sure that you are being supportive and being a great guest during the shopping experience. The next thing that you wanna be doing is listening to any wedding woes that she has and just being a general good listening ear for any wedding help that she might need. So just being there for her in general during the wedding planning process, if she needs any help with any projects, making sure that you are there for her. Obviously, you don't need to be her wedding planner. That is not your job to be doing every single one of her wedding tasks for her. If you are becoming that, I would highly suggest that you suggest to her that she hires a wedding coordinator or a wedding planner, because again, that is not your job, but helping here and there with a little project is no big deal, and that is definitely something nice that you can assist her with. The next thing I would recommend is that you ask for the wedding day timeline the week of the wedding. Normally the bride should receive this about the Monday before the wedding from her coordinator or planner. So it's a definitely great idea to ask for this from the bride so that way you can review it and make sure that on the wedding day itself you can keep all of the bridesmaids on time to prevent anybody from delaying the wedding day photos because nobody wants to make the bride late for her own photos on the wedding day. And then during the wedding getting ready 
ready portion of the day, make sure that you keep the bridal getting ready suite clean so that it looks nice and pristine for the photos. I'm going to be doing a video all about the best getting ready photos possible. So if you're a maid of honor or a bride watching this video and you are interested in that, I will be doing that in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. And then another thing that I highly recommend is that during the wedding party photos of the bridesmaids, the groomsmen, the full wedding party, is that you should definitely be lending a helping hand to the photographer if things are getting out of control. So if the wedding party is getting rowdy and they're not paying attention to the photographer, definitely get them in line because the last thing that the photographer needs is for people to be getting out of control and making the photos run late because what happens when those photos run late is the photographer doesn't have as much time to do couples portraits or they run late for other parts of the day and you don't want the couple to lose time from other parts of their wedding photos. That is really bad for the couple. So you don't want that happening for them because the couple has invested a lot of money in their photos and you don't want other parts of their photos running late or you don't even want the wedding party photos to lose time. So definitely help out the photographer if the wedding party is getting out of control make sure that they're listening really well and paying attention. Next, you're going to want to make sure that when the bride gets to the front of the aisle for the ceremony, that you fix her train and her veil, straighten it out really nice and neat so that it looks perfect for all of her photos because the last thing that you want for her is for her train and veil to look really disheveled for the entirety of her ceremony pictures. So we definitely don't want that. And then another thing that you can be doing is making sure that throughout the day, the bride is hydrating and eating so that she doesn't faint during her ceremony for example, or she doesn't faint out on the dance floor. So she does need to be eating. It can be really easy to forget to eat and hydrate during your wedding day. So make sure she's snacking and drinking water, not just alcohol, but definitely lots of water throughout the wedding day. And then for you, make sure that you are enjoying the wedding day itself. You do have duties to fulfill as a maid of honor, but you should also be having fun. It's not all serious on the wedding day for you. It should be fun as well. You don't want to go to this day and be stress out and take it too, too seriously, you should be enjoying the day too. And if you are also a best man, make sure that you are enjoying the day as well, but also fulfilling your duties. So I hope that you found this video helpful and that you enjoyed it. Comment down below one of the things that you didn't realize that you had to be doing as a maid of honor. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.